this is not my car. Uh, the microphone is, yeah, it's on. Let me check the sound. Um, You're playing a video for us? Yeah, a small one. Control? So. Control, we need the computer sound. Thank you. It's uh, the second slide and then, then it's okay. Okay, is it running? Um, okay, oh, I like this. Here one. we go. Okay, yeah. So it's now up to me to enjoy you a little bit about uh, hacking yachts and um, what can go wrong with that. So, yeah, I call it then swimming IoT because of it's just like an IoT device. And uh, to get a small overview about it, uh, as always, the clicker is not working now. It's not switched on. Like it is on. Yeah. Are you using the wrong one? Let me just I, I use it by hand. It's okay. This one's yours. There you go. This one is better. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Uh, yeah. Because I know Karen loves it. Um, yeah, the sound is missing. Come on. Come on, talk to me. A rabbit uh, replicates till it overloads a file, then it spreads like cancer. Cancer? You have to see it, Karen. I think we should watch the complete movie, but uh, yeah, we want to hear, uh, hear a little bit more about chips. So yeah, hack the planet. <laughs> Who am I? Um, the, and, um, we hear something about yachts and ships. We have to start with a, a marina one by one so that you get an idea about what kind of systems are on a ship or an, a yacht and how they interact between. And uh, then you get an understanding about what attack vectors you have on the boat. Um, then we see already here um, the different attack vectors, then how you can look up your targets, which kind of security bugs um, you can find in some uh, of those routers. Um, we make a sneak pre uh, preview in uh, subcom boxes, where I found also some uh, nice stuff, and then uh, at the end, yeah, blah, blah. Can I ask you to speak up? So um, louder? Louder, yes, louder. I can do it. You can do it. <laughs> German loud. Yes. Yes, you can do it, please. Okay. Louder. So as you already um, know, my name is Stefan Gerling, uh, also on Twitter, Obi-Wan666. Loud enough? Yes. <laughs> I'm older than the internet, certified, um, yeah, I have many of those. I'm an electronic specialist, um, worked several years for the German Army, um, Army as a navigation system specialist for helicopters. I'm now 31 years a firefighter in Germany, um, a volunteer firefighter, I do it in my spare time. I'm a security evangelist in our company, um, do, uh, taking care about all those stuff, something about security also. So we're working in the oil and gas industry and uh, making normally pipeline services. So we're inspecting oil and gas pipelines. And um, in our newest branch, the certification, um, there we do also some uh, pen testing, security uh, audits and so on. Of course, also for vessels. Um, yes, I avoid warranties member of Geraffel, and I'm the cavalry. Here we go. What happened last year? So, so many newspapers about um, attacks against yachts and uh, systems and GPS and so on um, made it in the news. And um, that was, was also um, some kind of the idea to look a little bit more on, on that stuff. The initial um, idea about that was um, I was building up an um, internet router into an uh, into an yacht. So I was uh, three weeks working on a yacht to build up some stuff there. 
build up the internet router, the cabling, the antennas on the uh, Monkey Island, and uh, and so on. And um, after everything was finished, um, I was introducing the captain how the system was working. And at the same time, we were drinking a bottle of wine, and uh, I started my Wireshark into looking what the applications are doing uh, while I was in teaching. And after we finished, um, I had a faith palm because I, I can't believe what uh, the application was doing, and uh, we will see it later. So these are only some newspapers. Here are a um, uh, short overview about it. So in February last year, we had a container vessel some area, uh, in a uh, pirate area. They had no access to their uh, navigation system anymore for 10 hours, so they had to shut down their systems and uh, reboot it that the navigation system was working again. Um, in September last year, we had a GPS jammings uh, from the eastern direction. So uh, in Norway, they um, reported some uh, jamming in the GPS uh, by planes. And then uh, they started with a helicopter with a an, uh, with an beacon antenna. And then uh, they localized from which uh, direction the um, jamming came. Uh, came. So, and then they figured out, okay, it comes from the eastern direction. It could be Russian, could be Ukraine, somewhere in that area. Um, so just only know it's the eastern direction. And the U.S. Navy had last year um, four accidents with their warships. And when you think about, hey, a warship should have uh, the best people on board, the best navigator on board, and so on, but they crashed with, uh, yeah, with also uh, big container vessels and so on. And um, yeah, that happens. So in, uh, in some reports, I've read them, um, they claimed that uh, all the time it was uh, a human error because they did not follow the instruction about uh, how to navigate um, also in night hours. So there are not uh, enough people on the bridge and uh, they not following the rules about navigation. But after these crashes, uh, after they had four of them, uh, the rumors came up, uh, could it be a cyber attack? If it, is, it was a cyber attack, we don't know. The official statement is uh, not. The official, uh, official statement was a uh, human error. Okay, now we go into um, the terms of vessels, yachts, and ships. A yacht is an, um, schm a small boat or ship, um, and uh, it comes from the J a Dutch word, uh, yacht. And yacht in Dutch means something like hunting. So it's a hunting boat for pirates uh, in the shallow water of the uh, Dutch countries um, in the past. So that terms then um, the yeah that created now the terms for yacht. And uh, nowadays a, a yacht is an, a recreational boat or a sporting boat or something like that. And of course size matters as always. Um, um, we're talking about a boat when we have smaller than seven meters. Um, when we have already uh, more than ten meters, we have a yacht. We have a super yacht when we're going above 24 meters, and uh, we're talking about a mega yacht when we have uh, more than 50 meters. So here is a sample of them. Um, it's a picture of the German trash TV series, The Geissens. Uh, it's their um, Indigo Star boat. It's a yeah, 1996 one model, uh, 30 meters about that. It's a, a super yacht, and yeah. It looks nice, uh, it works. <laughs> I have not enough money for that. But uh, it's, uh, those class of, uh, uh, when we're talking about yachts above 30 meters, then you have already very, very nice ones, even if they are old. Um, what I have on board, everything. So this is a complete list about stuff that is um, what I have uh, on board there. So. We have vessel traffic services, so it's like uh, like air traffic services, where the um, air traffic controller is um, giving position to the aircraft, and says, "Okay, you have to fly um, level 300 um, in that direction." The same system you have um, uh, for ships, mostly in harbors. 
so that uh, the vessel traffic services uh, provider then uh, saying, okay, this is your course, this is your speed that you have to drive, and then uh, everyone in the harbor are uh, maneuvering uh, in the right direction. They provided by this uh, automatic identification system, um, also autopilots, GPS, radar, um, cameras, uh, including also uh, thermal imaging cameras. We have uh, engine control and monitoring systems. Nowadays, some of them are also cloud-based. We hear it later. We have internet access on board in different ways, and we have uh, some kind of entertainment systems with smart TVs and whatever. All those devices uh, that you need for the navigation um, or for the um, boat controlling, um, it's connected over an um, NMEA bus. So it's a serial bus standardized under the National Marine Associated Association. It's uh, NMEA 0183, that's the term for that. And uh, this is a serial bus. So um, the speed is about 4,800 baud. So you cannot transmit so many information over that. You, um, they are connecting mostly echo sounders, sonars, anemometers, gyro compass. Um, autopilot, GPS receivers, and some other instruments like temperature or whatever. Then, uh, because of they need some faster things, they have introduced the NMEA 2000. Here we have already a uh, bandwidth of one megabit. Um, it's not in serial protocol anymore. In uh, this case, we have now a um, technology uh, like in the car industry. So it's in CAN bus, so uh, they're using also the, uh, the same cabling standards. So we have a CAN low, CAN high, um, and um, the power over the bus, and that's it. And um, it's, uh, everything is standardized under the uh, NMEA 2000, and you can buy those standardization uh, reports about and how it's working uh, from the NMEA association. So this is how it looks like. So it's a complete bus. Um, I think here is a laser. It's a complete bus from front to the end of the ship. And uh, all the devices are connected here together. So here we have an uh, NMEA 183 uh, uh, device and it's connected with a uh, gateway that's um, converting the uh, serial bus to NMEA bus. And we have also here gateways that connecting um, to other dis, uh, devices here, like uh, displays or computers and so on. This is how it looks in uh, real. So it looks more like a cheaper net in the older days, um, where some of the, uh, us here already worked with. Here we have an, um, another term for that. Um, the NMEA 2000 is also um, available as CTALK NG. And uh, this is then uh, now a uh, brand name of Raymarine. So it's, uh, Raymarine is one vendor of uh, these marine stuff. And um, as you can here see, you see all those devices that you can see on ships, uh, on the bridge, on uh, anywhere there. And the newer network that they have, uh, this is some kind of Ether network. And uh, they call it then uh, CTALK uh, uh, HS, it's uh, high speed. So it's um, near about uh, 10 megabit that they have on traffic. And um, you, are, you can already see that there is a an, uh, an multimedia display where you can also display videos and those stuff. When we tear down now the network, how it looks like, then uh, we see all those stuff here like uh, we have here the internet router, uh, the, inter yeah, the internet router here, this is uh, um, how they connect it. Here are some access points, we have some uh, mobile devices, we have computers uh, on the normal network. Then we have some converters that converting the NMEA network to the TCP IP network. It could be over a USB device with a laptop. It could also be a native device that's directly connected to the, um, to the computer network. And here below, we have all the systems uh, connected over these CAN bus. So this we have to remember that all those devices are connected via this bus. 
and they have connections over those gateways to the normal ones. We will see later why, uh, why it is important. So uh, the marine electronic, um, in the overview we had already these um, vessel traffic services, uh, the AIS system, the ACDIS, uh, the electronic chart display, and information system, and uh, autopilot and internet access. So the vessel traffic services, it uh, is um, yeah, like this air traffic controller system by um, our and port authorities and uh, using radar, CCTV, VHF uh, radio telephony and uh, the AIS system. So this we have to remember, the VTS is using the AIS. The AIS is the uh, automatic identification system and uh, it's um, for tracking those devices um, and it's tr uh, transmitting the, um, yeah, the ship name, the course, the speed, uh, the heading and so on. And it's mostly over VHF radio. It could also be over satellite. So the VTS is using the AIS. So the AIS uh, information using um, GPS for the positioning. Um, yeah, and uh, it also supporting the, um, the Marina Radar. So the, the, that's coming now in the next one. So the electronic chart display and information system, the ACDIS, this one is uh, displaying um, like the navigation system in the car. Here you have the waterways and here you then will see all the ships that the AIS information are submitted. Remember that the AIS is getting the information from the GPS system and, uh, and so on. So everything tears down uh, back to the GPS system and all the devices are interconnected over those CAN bus. So just keep in mind. Um, it integrates the positioning information, the position, the heading and the speed and um, it's submitting also the information to other devices. And the last thing that we have on board is then um, the IT equipment. <coughs> so IT equipment we have also at home. Um, in this case, we have um, yeah, internet access um, anyhow. Uh, it could be over GSM, it could be over Wi-Fi, it could be over satellite. In Mazad, uh, VZ, Iridium or whatever. And on board we have also entertainment systems. We have Wi-Fi, we have voice over IP, and what else, um, whatever. So this is a picture of an, uh, it was a 40 meter yacht where I was working on. And that is a complete 19 inch rack, uh, full high, completely uh, equipped with IT stuff. So here we have the internet router, very small one. We have here three servers three 19-inch rack servers mounted uh, to the system. We have here uh, two voice over IP gateways. We see later why. We have a fully equipped switch and we have a UPS power supply. And when we then look what else is on the boat, um, you see that there are 10 smart TVs and satellite receivers. And we have one chart PC uh, for, the, for the navigation system. We have 14 voice over IP telephones. We have an internet router. We have rack mounted switch, UPS, four Wi-Fi access points, etc., etc. So many IT stuff. And all that stuff is used um, to connect those devices um, together. So you can stream audio and video from the multimedia entertainment system. You can use your iPod, uh, iPhone or um, or your computer to uh, stream videos and sound. You can uh, control the light scenes of the ship. Uh, you can uh, close the electric curtains of the ship. Um, and you can also control the engine motor or display the engine status here on this display. So these are all screenshots from, uh, from an iPad where you can do all those things with. So this is the curtain control. This is the um, light scene. This is the engine control system and yeah multimedia. So if we see now this stuff all together, and we're coming to the different attack vectors. 
So we can attack it over the internet. So if it is connected to the internet, it could be uh, attacked. We can also try, when it is connected to the internet, uh, try some social engineering attacks against the crew members, uh, against the captain, or uh, against the owner of the ship, if we know who the owner is. We can also try to uh, weaponize the uh, mobile devices that they are using. Um, and we can also try, um, if we get access over one of those devices here, to search for those gateways to have access to the underlying uh, network. And of course, when we have that uh, um, achievement solved, then we have access to the complete network here below. So in the overview, we see we have an attack vector for GPS. We have AIS that we can attack. Uh, we see attacks against autopilots, the IT equipment on board, and uh, the internet connection and uh, cloud-based services that are coming more and more. So let's lay, uh, take a deeper look on those um, attacks, what we can see. So GNSS is Global uh, Network Satellite Services, or, or in a shorter way, just GPS called. So in the GPS, we can have um, spoofing attacks, or we can have uh, denial of solving attacks, uh, jamming. So, Therefore, you have to know that there are five different no, four different systems are. So they all call GPS systems, but um, we have the US, um, the, the US version. It's a Navstar GPS that most of the mobile phones using. We have an, a GLONASS version. Uh, it's from the Russians. We have Galileo that the Europeans uh, are uh, using, and we have uh, the Baidu version from the Chinese ones all those working on different frequencies. And here is a frequency map about uh, which kind of them they're using. So mostly they're using the L1 band, uh, but uh, some of them also in the L2 um, and L5 band. So, but um, all those systems are using only a few um, frequencies. So it's easy to jam those things. So to make a denial of service about the GPS. So um, you can easily look at Wikipedia that you have uh, the exact frequency, make a jammer for that, and uh, you didn't hear anything about, uh, or they didn't receive a uh, correct positioning about that. Um, by the way, the L1 band, it's uh, around 1,500 megahertz, uh, 1,542 up to 1,544 megahertz. So it's only uh, two megahertz between it. Yeah. So the two uh, scenarios that we have here is uh, we can have jamming or we can have spoofing. Jamming is quite simple. You can use an hack RF with a big antenna, and then uh, you have your goal achieved. For the spoofing attacks, you need a little bit more. You can buy those stuff um, also on the internet for testing uh, devices. So when someone has to develop um, GPS applications, so how they test it, so you can buy boxes for that, uh, how you can, uh, uh, where you can change um, or test GPS um, equipment. And uh, it's available for 1,000 euros, something like that. But for really spoofing, um, it's quite harder because you have to uh, manipulate or, um, the receiver with three different spoofed signals because a valid, um, a valid GPS Positioning is calculated from three different satellite signals, and then uh, from the difference and the signal timing, uh, then uh, um, the receiver is then calculating uh, how, how the positioning is. So you have to spoof three signals, and you have to know which uh, three signals are inside of the receiver at that point at that time. It's possible, but it's a little bit more work. So. It could be maybe easier to fake the NMEA data on, of the GPS sensors. As we keep in mind, the GPS receiver is receiving a valid GPS signal and sending it back over the NMEA network to all other devices. So when we can have control over this gateway and fake NMEA data on the bus, then it doesn't matter what the GPS sensor is receiving, so we can just inject our own uh, GPS signals. Okay, GPS jamming, um, it, 
happens quite often. So mostly uh, in bigger maneuvers, uh, we can see that. So in June uh, last year, we had uh, more than 20 reports. And at that time, some NATO troops were, um, were maneuvering uh, in the Northeast Black Sea. And uh, yeah, as already said in the Norway report, um, also something like that. How we can protect from that? So currently there is a um, research project by the DLR and they're trying to uh, make an, some kind of um, yeah, detection system to only bypass valid uh, GPS signals and filter out all those fake signals. So how are they doing it? So they have a uh, two by two antenna array. Here is an, a signal about uh, the receiving and here you see it, it's a flat panel and here you have a uh, two by two GPS antennas and by calculating the signals from which angel it coming in, they can filter out, okay, this must be a um, wrong one and uh, uh, if it comes from the right angel, it, it must be a right one. So they, uh, they uh, filter out the wrong ones and amplifying the right ones. So it is working, uh, but it's still under testing phase. But I'm sure uh, we can, will see it in the future. Yeah. Now we come a little bit more to the AIS system. So the AIS system is inter uh, uh, exchanging so many information about the ships and you also can uh, look up that easily. Maybe someone of you uh, knowing about the flight radar, uh, flight radar 24 tracker where you can uh, look up aircrafts. Um, the same system is available for ships. It's uh, called Marine Tracker. Uh, yeah, marinetraffic.com. Uh, there you can look up all the ships. Um, I can just, I show you. Dun, 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 dun. I have it here. So this is um, the web, no, it's not the website. I have to shift it. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go. Um, this is here now Tel Aviv, the harbor, and here we see some uh, ships that are here. So you can uh, look up on one of those ships and then see the details about that. Come on. Okay, here is a sailing boat, uh, the name of the ship, and so on. Um, yeah. Let's go further with that. Hello. Why my presentation is not coming back? Ah, here we are. Okay, you can uh, look up all the information. Uh, so you get information about the uh, uh, mobile service identifier. So it's like a unique um, unique number like your mobile phone number, um, like the IMSI. You can have information about uh, is the ship under anchor or underway, under, um, uh, not under command or something like that. The rate of turn, the speed, uh, the speed over ground, um, positioning accurately, um, the course over ground, the true heading and some uh, time information. And uh, these are the information that you can see then on the web page. So here you have the IMO, the, MM, I, um, the MMSE, the original call sign. The ship is under the uh, flag of Malta. It's a pleasure craft. It has a uh, 310 uh, gross tonnage. Um, it's a 38 meter uh, yacht from 1995. This is the um, um, yeah, the Geisens yacht, and this is the actual position about that. And it's under the status of moored and making no speed, so it's laying anywhere in the harbor, and that's it. And uh, all those informations are sent every ten, uh, two to ten seconds with uh, all those things that we can see here. Um, yeah. Up to every six minutes, it's sending a couple of more information about that. So um, the dimension of the ship, the name, uh, is it a cargo or whatever ship, 
and so on. So this uh, AIS system is really quite uh, often speaking and uh, spreading the information through the world. And how it is working, it's just only a VHF radio channel that they're using, two channels they're using. And uh, you can listen to that um, when you have a receiver that's working under 161 and 162 megahertz. So it's a little bit um, modulated. It's an um, GSMK, yeah, GMSK modulated, and it's only 9,600 bits that they're transmitting. And of course, there is an HackRF project for that, so, uh, or GNU radio project. When you go to the web page, you can download uh, the GNU radio chart. This is then the chart, uh, how it looked like, um, just using some of your RTL SDR devices, and then you can listen to um, the AIS informations. If you want to spoof those informations, just change some of the settings here, make a transmitter about it, and send whatever you want. But remember, it's illegal. I think. <laughs> okay, uh, another one that I uh, mentioned was autopilots. So some ships have autopilot systems on board. So um, this was a picture that I've made uh, by build up some stuff and uh, a sailor friend of me uh, directly recognized, hey, they have an autopilot system on board. I said, what? Yeah, they have an autopilot. So yeah, what can you do with that? Yeah, you have a remote control unit where you can put in the speed and the uh, heading where you want to navigate to. So, okay, you're standing on the deck and having like the clicker here, you're saying, okay, uh, cross three, uh, three to zero uh, with a speed of 10 knots. Okay, this is how a, uh, a sample receiver looks like. It's a small wireless device. Okay, now I wanted to know uh, how those wireless devices are working. So. Um, I didn't know uh, anything about that, so I looked up some stuff for that. Um, and then I'm looking for, okay, where I can start. I go to the webpage of Raymarine, uh, looking for the autopilot systems, and then I found uh, yeah, one of those systems. Then I looked a little bit deeper, so FCC ID, uh, because everything what's, has wireless transmission anywhere, and it's uh, um, allowed in the market of the US, must be, um, um, yeah, must be on the web page of the FCC web uh, site and where you can uh, get information. So I looked up uh, the information for that and then you can see, okay, it's those system. It operates on uh, 2.45 gigahertz. It's not a Wi-Fi device. It's something else. So luckily, uh, the schematics and uh, detailed information about those systems are also on the web page. So this is also, uh, uh, also from the FCC ID website where you can easily see then, uh, okay, it's an, um, it's an Ember wireless device, uh, the, uh, the EM2420, uh, uh, and it's an Atmega64 uh, processor. And it uh, has an own network stack called Ember stack. So at that point, I could not go further because lack of having those devices in place. So I'm, uh, I think in September I'm again on a yacht so that I can um, go further with those devices to check again what is uh, transmitted over that, how the uh, frequency signals are looking, how the modulation schemes are, and so on. So uh, I think in, um, to the end of the year I, I know more about the autopilot system and um, I believe there is something possible, but I cannot um, comply now. Yeah, beginning, uh, yeah coming back to the beginning of my story, um, I've built up those system because uh, the owner has bought it. So it's a device from Locomarine. It's, um, yeah, the left one, it's looking like proprietary and the right one looking like the um, Microtech metal uh, thing that you can buy on the web page for micro, uh, microtech routers. And it is one of those models. Um, they're claiming to have um, a booster module. 
and with the right antennas, you can have uh, up to 15 nautical miles Wi-Fi. Um, I'm not sure, I've calculated, uh, they have 1.6 watt electrical energy on the Wi-Fi. With a, a 12 dBE antenna, um, I had 25, uh, 25 watt ERP. Oh, I have to hurry up. And um, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, we looked up, um, I looked up to the, to the software. The software was then uh, like, this is from the tablet now, or from the computer, it looks like the same. So what I uh, found out then was, they make, uh, every time you use the uh, software, they make an FTP connect to the router. The um, software then downloading an uh, XML file, when you change something in the application, um, it writes this back in the XML file and uploaded it again to the router. And as you know, FTP is clear text. Um, they're using hard-coded credentials. And uh, in the XML files, you find all uh, other informations. So <laughs> the username you see, and uh, I love the password because <laughs> secure connecting user is a really nice one. And also, yeah, uh, by the way, loco is in Spanish word for mad. Um, <laughs> well, crazy, crazy, yes. <laughs> so I, I don't know if it has something to do with the software, but uh, yeah. Okay, then, uh, yeah, that's paid my uh, attention. Then I looked up uh, the software more and more. So the um, Windows executables were in, uh, developed in .NET. So when you then uh, use a tool like ILSpy, you see some uh, juicy information like usernames uh, or developer names, um, and also um, the Yacht Router engine where the configuration, everything is in. Okay, the, the, the next one is um, the system has no firewall configured. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a router. <laughs> but uh, on the internet side, it should be protected anyhow. Um, yeah, from the internet, you see all those port ports are open. Also the FTP one. Remember, there is a hard-coded credentials. What could possibly go wrong? Um, yeah, then they have an, uh, another function. It's called remote support. The remote support is, um, yeah, to give them a ring, say, uh, okay, you can um, support me at that time, and then they connect to your device. But they didn't ask for an IP address. How they know? They only want to know the serial number of your device. Um, yeah, every time when you start these uh, remote support thing, they're making a ping to their servers, and uh, the servers, um, the IP address belongs then to their systems, and then they know, okay, this is the IP address from that device with that serial number. Um, yeah, and what they're using then is then um, the Winbox fire, ma uh, the Winbox management software. It's a uh, management software that you can use for MicroTIG router to administer everything on those boxes. And with these um, Winbox management software, you can uh, also look up then other informations like um, the user local, the password is not displayed here, but the developer has his own back uh, pass, um, user. So the developer has always access with his password and his username to the boxes when they are online. So why should they have that? And you cannot change it uh, on the normal way. Um, if you don't know the passwords, you can also use um, a tool for MicroTIG routers called MK Brutos, so you can try to brute force those things. Yeah. So now we have that done, so we have to find those yachts. Hmm. Um, I looked up on the web page, they have also some information where they build up those systems, then go to marinetraffic.com. There you can uh, look up those devices uh, again, and uh, yeah, you can see where they are, and then you go to Showdown. <laughs> Just look for them. <laughs> when you're then using Showdown, you can see, okay, here is a uh, ship that I looked up, it's uh, on the Thames, um, and so on. 
By the way, Shodan has now a uh, ship tracker, an uh, own ship tracker service. So ship tracker.shodan.io, uh, there you can look up all the systems like marinetraffic.com. Not so good, but uh, you can look up those things. Um, yeah. Okay, then I reported the bug to the vendor. Um, they fixed directly something. Then uh, in November, they finally um, bring out the final release. Um, I got the permission to present that stuff. Um, I have my CV, um, yeah, CVE ID for that, um, and so on. Then I looked up the software, what I have patched. Um, okay, they're using now SSH instead of FTP, but uh, obfuscated um, the things in the software. So I'll spy uh, always um, jumped out with an error. So, hmm, okay, what I can do? So I asked a friend uh, who is better in reverse engineering, so he was uh, able to do something. But uh, at the same time, uh, I was looking, okay, I had uh, the Windows executable, but there is also an um, iOS version and there is an Android version. So what I've done then, I take the Android app, um, app decompiled it, <laughs> and here you can see the user local is anywhere, they have a new password, it's more secure now, and, <laughs> <laughs> and this is the old one, uh, they, what they are replacing but they changed not really something else. <laughs> so here you see it again. And what also was nice, there is another one, um, data leakage prevention, uh, or the patch backbone data leak. So I don't know where the class is good for. Um, yeah, maybe you can look up by downloading your software yourself. Obfuscating is not uh, really protecting. If you do obfuscating, don't forget the Android and iOS APKs, uh, uh, application. Um, Hard-coded credentials is no good solutions for that. And uh, yeah, SSH is already a good one, but uh, don't forget the other ones. And uh, yeah, now I have to hurry up a little bit. Um, I just want to show only the SATCOM things in a quick way. So internet access via SATCOM is also possible. These are already known uh, showdown search uh, terms that you can use to look up uh, already known vulnerable versions that are uh, in the internet. Um, yeah, the ship tracker things I also mentioned. And uh, the ship tracker one is only using the, the VZ. Uh, so uh, Inmazat and so on are uh, also there. So I was searching um, at Shodan for some other stuff, and then I, um, yeah, I dangled over this digital antenna systems. So, and I looked up what it is, and then it comes uh, clear that it was a uh, Copam uh, MXP web server for um, internet access for those uh, big satellite dishes. So, this is then an, um, clearly indexed on Shodan, where you can see, okay, this is one of those things, and when you use the search term, micro digital web server, you find those boxes. Okay, um, yeah, the demo I quit because I have it as a picture also. So when you use the showdown search um, for those terms, you find those things. This is how the um, dishes are looking like. So they have a uh, web interface and so on. The interesting thing is, when you have the web page in front, there's a uh, JavaScript loaded. In the JavaScript, it's in the uh, uh, JS uh, slash user login Java, there is some <laughs> nice stuff. If logged on as dealer, then uh, use the menu dealer gx.html. If as sysadmin, use this one. If this one, use this one. <laughs> okay. When you now um, just putting the URL string in the URL uh, complete, then you have access to the system <laughs> without login. So then you are locked in um, as a dealer and have uh, full access. Also, the nice thing is you have then now access to a command line interface. With this command line interface, you can do uh, some other nice stuff like uh, reconfiguring uh, those satellite boxes. And uh, you can also do some firmware upgrade, uh, file uploads, downloads, and so on. So, when you want to play with those stuff, feel free. Um, it's up to you. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't do it. 
And by the way, if you uh, don't have a password, uh, just read the manual. Um, yeah. Okay. Then I looked up, is there already a CVE report for that? Yeah, fuck, someone was uh, um, yeah, quicker than I. But he reported only one version. So I can uh, comply for four other versions that are also <laughs> vulnerable. Uh, yeah, and by the way, these are all other uh, URLs that you can use uh, where you can uh, access the system without authentication. So the interesting thing is you can configure I.O. ports for other devices, the command line interface, change antenna configuration, download, upload, blah, blah, blah. So what is the risk now for that? More or less denial of service. That's a bad thing. Or you can increase uh, the cost for the system um, due to the high expensive uh, data plans that they have. And yeah, so now we are going to the finish of that. A quick future look up. So the future is now that they're connecting, uh, this is only a sample, cloud services with cloud devices to all the systems and then uh, access to the complete backbone network. So we have to look up those devices in future, uh, the cloud services, with those things you have access to the complete engine control systems and so on. And yeah, finishing with that, may the fourth be with you. In the last minutes, I had to quick up a little bit. So if there are any questions, yes? Pardon? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, um, I expected nothing to see. And uh, yeah, as I have seen it there, so um, yeah, OK. It was not that what I was expecting. Um, it was by accident. So the complete talk maybe is by accident now. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, with yep. that information, then I started to dig deeper and deeper in that, uh, yeah. uh, in that topic. Relevant. So, yeah. Anything else? Or you can ask me later uh, outside. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.